It was requested about two hours ago, and I just sat down and said I would do it. This is a, oh my goodness, I'm never going to pronounce this name correctly. Heracleus. Heracleus. I'm saying it proud. Heracleus. Unless it ain't. Then. Um, well, the screen's blurry, clearly. So let's get into this. This video. Don't worry. I've got some snacks. I got some candies. Bring some candy. Video. When the Prophet Muhammad, at a certain time in his messengership in the Medina, sent letters to various rulers and dignitaries throughout the world at the time, including the Persian Roman Emperor, for example, the Pope in Rome, Nagus of Abyssinia, Macolchus, the leader of the Copts in Egypt, <clears throat> and one of these letters reached Heraclius. Heraclius. Heraclius was the Roman Emperor at the time. And when Heraclius received this letter, he called for his translator and he gathered together some of the Arabs who were there at the time and one of them happened to be Abu Sufyan. Abu Sufyan was a cousin of the Prophet and he was the leader of Mecca and the leader of the pagans at the time and he happened to be in Jerusalem when Heraclius received this letter. He called for his translator who, translating Heraclius's question, said to them, who amongst you is closely related to that man who claims to be a prophet? And Abu Sufyan replied, I am. It's kind of disrespectful, who claims to be related to that man, the prophet. But at the same time, if that happened today, I uh, look at that, that guy says he's a prophet. Eh. So I, you know, yeah, I would probably do the same thing, so, yeah, understandable. The nearest relative to him, and Heraclius said, bring him close to me, and make his companions stand behind him. Heraclius told his translator to tell Abu Sufyan's companions that he wanted to put some questions to me regarding that man and that if I told a lie, they should contradict me. So there we are, there we're in the court of Heraclius, and Heraclius is saying, okay, you, your companions stand behind you, and if he tells a lie, you must tell me that he's lying. Now, Abu Sufyan said, by Allah, had I not been afraid that my companions were gonna label me a liar, I would have not have spoken the truth about the Prophet. So the first question Heraclius asked Abu Sufyan was this, what family status has he amongst you? Abu Sufyan replied, he belongs to a noble family amongst us. Then Heraclius asked, has anybody else amongst you ever claimed the same before him? I replied, no. Was any amongst his ancestors a king? Heraclius asked. Again, Abu Sufyan replied, no. Heraclius asked, do the nobles or the poor follow him? Abu Sufyan replied, it is the poor who follow him. Can I just say, the king, you know, does he have any come from noble, no, come from a king? When he said no, I can tell, I'm just, that there had to be people in there that were like, what? How can this guy claim to be a prophet? He didn't come from a king or something. You know what I mean? Like, I can just tell the, the negative, like, <sighs> what and then who follows him the poor and I, I have a feeling right now they're gonna be like okay we've seen this before the poor followed another fella and he ended up on a cross so I'm kind of thinking they're thinking uh oh are we going down this road again and then the Heraclius asked are his followers increasing or decreasing? Abu Sufyan replied, they are increasing. Then he asked, does anybody amongst those who embrace his religion become displeased and renounce the religion afterwards? Abu Sufyan replied, no. 
Heraclius then said, have you ever accused him of telling lies before his claim? Again, Abu Sufyan says no. Wow. Heraclius says, does he break his truce? Abu Sufyan replied, no. We are at truce with him now, and we don't. It's an honorable person that signs a truce and holds himself to it and doesn't break it. And that, to me, goes a long way to seeing the character of someone. And I, I don't want to say it validates him, but it shows you that he's he's a man of his word. And it's a, it, that's, I mean, that's an important, that's, that's a... It's a big character thing, you know, it's a flaw. Anyone can say something and do something else, but, you know, that, that's, that's big. That's big. For me, know that's what big. what he's going to do in it. And Abu Sufyan said, I could not fuck. So I, I kind of spoke a little bit. I'm going to go back to there. So we are at truce with them now. Oh. Okay. And we don't know what he's going to do in it. And Abu Sufyan said, I could not find opportunity to say anything against the Prophet except that time. Then Heraclius asked, have you ever had a war with him? And he, Abu Sufyan said, yes. What was the outcome of the battles? Well, sometimes we were victorious and sometimes he was victorious. And then Heraclius asked, what does he order you to do? And Abu Sufyan replied, he tells us to worship Allah and Allah alone and not to worship anything along with him and to renounce all that our ancestors had said. He orders us to pray, to speak the truth, to be chaste, and to keep good relation with our kith and kin. Heraclius asked the translator to convey the following. I asked you about his family, and your reply was that he belonged to a very noble family. In fact, all the prophets come from noble families amongst their respective peoples. I questioned you whether anybody else among you claimed such a thing. And your reply was in the negative. If the answer had been in the affirmative, I would have suspected this man was following the previous man's statement. Yeah. Then I asked you whether any of his ancestors was a king. And you said no. If you had said yes, I would have thought that this man was trying to take back his kingdom. Yes. In other words, use the mantle of prophethood to try and take back the kingdom. Then I yeah, basically, he's he's going to say whatever he has to do to get back into a position of power. And that's why I think there were probably some people there that were like, ugh. But I think this guy, oh, I'm going to butcher his name again, Heraclius. How could I have forgotten so quickly? I had the mind of a goldfish. This guy sounds like he's level-headed enough to kind of see through things, to, to really evaluate things. And I'll tell you what, he's getting the straight answers from this guy because he knows. And I, for Abu, I'll, post, I'll fix that up in I asked you if he was ever accused of telling lies before this, before his claim to prophethood. And you said no. And then I wondered, how can a person who never lies to people lie about Allah? How could a person who never lies to people lie about Allah? And then I asked you whether the rich people or the poor people follow him, and you said that the poor people follow him. And so it is with all the prophets. They have always been followed by that type of people. The prophets are always followed by the poor and the weak and the oppressed. Then I asked you whether his followers were increasing or decreasing. I'll go back. Those, to me, those people would follow a prophet because a prophet doesn't look down on them. A prophet would be humble to them, would be amongst them, would treat them as just human beings. As a, and, and I'm going back in time, clearly. The rich back then, ugh, those people are dirty and da, da, you know, but somebody who profit, somebody who's good heart, wouldn't do that. And 
that says a lot again about the character and you as I say you can tell a lot if he was trying to get his kingdom back you know if he were king and he was trying to do all this you would see cracks in him you would see flaws you would ignore those flaws oh no I dropped a piece of candy uh oh the world's going to it gonna end okay nope 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 candy was found so I'll just take a breather we're good we're okay I forgot where I was at uh, I pro you know what it was I was saying something wrong and Allah slapped the candy out of my hand that's what it was I didn't do anything wrong I don't know what you it was a good piece of candy but if he was a king trying to get his kingdom back oh my gosh how did I instantly remember what I was gonna say But he would, you would see cracks, flaws. You would start to see things like, I I want to believe him, but, you know, he, he acts like this, but when he's around, you know, he, he looks like he's humbled around poor people, but then he kind of hits his point where he's like, ah, oh, get away from me, come on, let's just get out of here. You know what I mean? It, you would start to see things that made you start to to wonder if what you're, what you've believed was true. And when you see, I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to go back. When you see that type of thing, that when you see that it's not there and that they're kind of a man of their word and things like that, you really do start to believe that, and he didn't want them to worship him. And, and I don't know much about religion. I really don't, but I know Jesus was kind of the same thing from my understanding don't worship me worship God worship out did I say I'll he left me he's gone now he's disappointed Allah don't you know I'm just the messenger don't don't thank me don't worship me don't do anything and I think that's another thing that kind of uh, speaks volumes to how um, I broke my candy what is happening with me right now that's another thing that I think goes a long way. I, I, I don't know if I've just rambled and made sense. Let's pretend I have. I rewound it a little bit because I interrupted. The poor and the weak and the oppressed. Then I asked you whether his followers were increasing or decreasing. You said they were increasing and that is the way of true faith until it is complete in all respects. I further asked you if there was anybody who after embracing his religion became displeased and discarded his religion and you said no. In fact this is the sign of true faith when its delight enters the heart and mixes with them completely. I asked you whether he had ever betrayed, you said no. And so the prophets never betray. I asked you what he ordered you to do and you told me that he ordered you to worship Allah and Allah alone and not to worship anything else along with him and forbade you from worshipping idols and told you to pray and to speak the truth and not commit illegal fornication. If what you said is true, he will very soon occupy this place underneath my feet. And I knew it from the scriptures that he was going to appear. But I did not know that he would be from you. And if I could reach him definitely, I would go immediately to meet him. And if I was with him, I would wash his feet. Wow. Heraclius then asked for the letter of the prophet, which was delivered by Dia to the governor of Bura, and then it was forwarded to Heraclius to read. And this is what the letter said. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, from Muhammad, the slave of God and his messenger, to Heraclius, the ruler of the Byzantines. Peace be upon him who follows the right path. Furthermore, I invite you to Islam. And if you become a Muslim, you will be safe. And Allah will double your rewards. And if you reject this invitation, you will be committing a sin by misguiding your peasants. O people of the scripture, come to a word common between you and us that we worship none but Allah and that we associate nothing in worship with Him. 
and that none of us should take lords besides Allah. Then, if they turn away, say, bear witness that we are Muslims. This is, of course, the translation of a verse of the Quran. And Abu Sufyan added, when Heraclius had finished his speech and had read the letter, there was a great hue and cry in the royal court. And we were turned out of the court. I said to my companions, surely the issue of Ibn Abi Kabsha, and that was a type of derogatory term they used, a nickname they used for the Prophet His affair has become so prominent that even the king of the Byzantines is afraid of him. And then I started to become sure that he would be the conqueror in the near future until I embraced Islam. Wow. That's crazy. That's interesting too that that seems like uh, oh my goodness am I going to butcher his name again? Heraclius? Wow. I really am a dummy. Um Sounds like he kind of had some some knowledge that he was going to be uh potentially removed. But that's cool. That, that, that was very cool of him to have respected it so much. Respected the letter. Instead of, I'm sure everyone else just probably was like, what? And just threw it away. You know what I mean? Uh, but, sorry. I'm, I'm not farting, I promise. It's this, it's this foot thing that's all cracked and broken because it's not on camera, so it doesn't have to look good. Not like, not like old Chuck. This is, in, this is, this is good. It's really interesting. I don't know what I would have done if I was in, in Heraclius' shoes or sandals. I don't know. Whatever happened? Now I want to know whatever happened to, to this situation. Did Heraclius... Did he switch? Did he go to Team Islam? What was he before? I could look up all of these things afterwards, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to rely on other people to do all that work. I got videos to make. <laughs> I'm lazy. All right. I appreciate that. I'm going to end this here. Uh, it's Tuesday night. Five. I can't read that clock. It's too far away. 5.30 on a Tuesday. 31. Son of a and this will be out tomorrow morning on Wendy's Day. It'll be out on Wendy's Day. All right. Thank you for the request. Like and subscribe. And, uh, well, I don't want to say that because this is a nice video. I don't want to end it by saying something weird. So, hey, yeah, you have a good one. Thank you.